Let's take a look in top plan. Let's look at our site model. And what I want you to pay attention to is that there's two different line colors here. And it might be a little difficult to see, but these lines right here, these dashed lines, they represent the existing site model, whereas the blue lines represent the proposed site model. So let's come over here and change those fields. So for the 2D display, let's go ahead and look at existing only. And you can see that only those green lines remain. And it's a fairly even grade that we drew. If I come over here and I change that to proposed only, then I can see how all of my site modifiers have changed that site. We commonly leave this set to both proposed and existing, but I wanted you to know the difference between the two different line types that you're looking at when you're in top plan view. I noted earlier that the order in which you add your site modifiers is important, and so I just want to go over that one more time and be a little bit more thorough, although we'll continue talking about this in subsequent lessons as we learn about the other modifiers. So the first modifiers that you want to add to your file are existing modifiers for things that cannot be changed. Next up, we have hardscapes with known elevations, and that's what we've been working on today. The last thing that you're going to add are going to be hardscapes with either unknown elevations or anything that has a vertical surface to it. And so those are modifiers that we'll learn in subsequent lessons. The other thing that we need to discuss is that there are certain rules about which modifiers can cross each other and which modifiers can touch. So let's talk a little bit about pads. So pads, if they're at the same elevation, they should be touching. So if you look at the way that we handled the hardscape here for the driveway, these two hardscapes, they touch. And those hardscapes have a slab modifier assigned to them. So that's perfect because the elevation right here at the top, so remember it's three feet on the lower edge of the hardscape that I have selected in orange. And then here at the bottom, it's three feet in height at the top edge. So that elevation is the same and therefore they should be touching. Then if we come over here and we can't see it right now, but remember we have that modifier with the slope for the stairs that we have right here. So the top edge of that modifier was two and a half feet, whereas the hardscape modifier that we have up here um, on the bottom edge of that is three feet. And that's one of the reasons why the modifier needed to end here at the bottom of that riser, rather than going all the way up to the top. Um, just because the elevation is not the same in order to have that slope correct on the inner corner of those risers. Also, pads should always be inside of the site model boundary, so you'd never want to have your site model coming off here to the side. Modifiers can be placed inside of one another. We don't currently have an example of that in our file, but that is one of the rules. And then things that you should avoid are modifiers that cross or leaving unnecessary gaps. So over here on the driveway, we wouldn't want to leave a gap in between these two modifiers we want them to touch. If your modifiers cross, and I'll give you an example of that right now, I'll show you what that looks like. So I'll just come over here and reshape this so that the slope modifier that I added to my stairs is now crossing over into the modifier that I've used for the hardscape that represents the sidewalk. So I'm gonna rotate this up and then click on the site model and update the site model. And then if I scroll down here to the bottom in Object Info Palette, I have this modifier conflict count that's two. And that's because I have modifiers that are crossing. So if I come back here in Top Plan View and make sure that the site model is the active layer and that the site model has been selected, I will get these two little symbols, these exclamation points that indicate that this is where I have a modifier conflict. Now, there are plenty of times where it'll show that there's a modifier conflict and the site model looks fine. And in fact, you don't need to worry about it. The only time that you really need to worry about it is if you start getting weird angles in your terrain model. That's probably because you have a modifier conflict. So let's come back in here. I'm going to gray these other design layers, and then I'm just going to reshape this. We'll 
update the site model one more time. And if I scroll down here, it says I still have the two modifier conflicts, but I'm really not worried about it because I don't see any issues in the site model.